Okay, just before we get going on the watercolour sky, I'll quickly go through some of the equipment we need. It isn't very much, so let me take a few seconds over it. We need some watercolour paper, and this is Bockingford paper. It's ideal for beginners to watercolour painting. You can get it in any art store under a variety of brand names. You need some paint, obviously. And here we're only going to use three colours. We're going to use ultramarine blue, yellow ochre and light red. And here I've mixed the ultramarine blue and the light red together. And that gives us a little bit of a shadow colour for the uh, cloud shadows a little later on. We need so, a brush, only one brush. And it doesn't matter whether you use a flat one like that or a round one like that. The main thing to remember is use a bigger brush than you think you're going to need because it will stop you fiddling. And then finally all we need is some clean water. Some paper towel for clearing up. Oh, and one other thing, and that's to put a box or a book or something under your paper pad to put it on a bit of an angle. And that helps the paint and the water flow down the paper and makes it much easier to cover the paper. Now what I've done is put the paper on a drawing board, which I've put vertically on an easel. I've done that so you can see it a bit easier on camera. But I wouldn't recommend this if you're just new to watercolours because the paint's very prone to running straight downwards. In fact, I've already got about three skies sitting on the table behind me, so I wouldn't recommend it for me at the moment, but there we go. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is to dampen the paper with clean water. You don't want it flooded, you want it damp, and only experience will tell you what the difference is. I put a little bit of the yellow oak. You can probably hardly see this on the camera, but all it does is to give a nice warm glow to the bottom of the sky near the horizon. And now I'm going to put the blue in. Okay, you remember the ultramarine blue? That's going to be nice and strong, much stronger than you think you need it. Okay. And you can see there, in fact you can see the paper has already started to dry, but I'm not worried because it'll start, you can see it's starting to flow where the uh, dampening paper is. And because there's already water on the paper, you can see just as I take this down the page, or down the piece of paper, it's actually a little bit more pigment in there, just track that down. You can see how it's lightening off as I get down towards the bottom of the paper. Now I'm not worried about those stripes because they'll start to blend in. As you can see it's already starting to blend in quite nicely so that's uh, going to give me a nice smooth transition from blue to very very pale yellow at the horizon. Now the next thing we do, and this is the fun bit, is where we actually take the clouds. How you're going to do that is by putting the brush into again into uh, clean water, well, nearly clean water, and then I'm just going to take some of that water out. And again, I want the brush head a little bit damp, but not flooded with water. And what I'm going to do now is just simply take out the clouds just by running the brush randomly across the paper, like that. And basically, I'm not adding water as much as taking out blue pigment. And as we get further down the sky, further away, the clouds <coughs> in the distance, just like mountains in the distance, get smaller. I could leave it at that if I wanted, and that gives me a nice, pleasing, feathery sky. I'll add another stage to that. And you remember the cloud colour that we mixed, the shadow colour of the ultramarine blue and the light. I'm going to just put a little hint of that into some of the bottom of the clouds here. Not too much, you don't want to overdo it. Exactly. A lot of people ask me, how do you avoid those horrible cauliflowers when you put paint into the sky? It suddenly blooms away and looks like an atomic explosion in the sky. The reason is that you put thin wet paint on top of thin wet paint and all the water in the two washes pushes the pigment that's on the paper to one side 
and that's how you end up with the cauliflower. The solution is quite simple. What you make sure you do is you put a stronger mix, not necessarily a darker, but a stronger mix of paint on your paper than has gone on previously. And that means there's, there's enough pigment knocking around on the paper to stop getting pushed around by the water. So as I say, I don't want to overdo this. Just a little hint here and there. And then as we get further away, you can see even this is getting pale because it's getting diluted by the water that's already on the paint. And for the clouds themselves to dry, what I'm going to do is just show you the difference between uh, the two sort of strengths of blue that I've mentioned a couple of times. It's a very common mistake that beginners make. When you put on your wet watercolour, you put it on and you think, oh yes, that looks about nice, that's quite a, a nice uh, strong blue. It may even be a little stronger than that. But what you actually need is the strength much more like that. Now you can see how weak that is compared to that. That looks right at the moment, but unfortunately it's going to dry that pale because watercolour dries about 50% lighter than when you first put it on. That's much more like the strength of our cloud scene. And I just thought I'd just hold this up by comparison. You can see that the clouds colour and the one which I painted much stronger is pretty much the same. Whereas if you compare it to the one which looks right when it first goes on the paper, you see what happens when it dries. Okay, just to finish off, I'm going to put a little bit of a landscape along the bottom so you can see the whole picture. And I'm just going to literally take what's in the bottom of the uh, palette. This happens to be the uh, cloud shadow mix. And we'll do, uh, I don't know, a couple of mountains or something like that. You know, it's actually, it's a, it's a great way to have a little doodle with watercolour paint this as well because there's no pressure to get things right. Uh, and with very few brush strokes, what we've got here is a little hint of a, of a distant landscape. Oh, I don't know, let's, let's put a little uh, ziggity zaggity roadway in like that. I mean, it's all running together because the paint is quite wet. So there we are. I hope this short video on producing a watercolour sky has been helpful to you. And the main thing is, I hope you enjoy your watercolour painting and this encourages you to have a go yourself. Remember, there's plenty more to see on howtodrawpaint.com and I'll see you next time. Cheers.